Welcome back, guys, for another episode. I'm just going to go through the cooling system while I have this engine out and figured out what I want to do with how all the lines route. I'm just going to go over the basics, then I'm going to talk about what I changed, and then a little bit about troubleshooting, and then uh, some modifications that you can make. <clears throat> so basically, to start with, the, the bigger hoses here, um, those basically take water to the engine and take it out. And uh, there's a difference between the 97.5 and later years, which one of those carries the intake water coming from the pump. The other one taking the water back out of the back of the ski, they're actually reversed between 97.5 and, say, 99. But uh, on the 97.5... The water comes into the tuned pipe there, goes in through the water jacket in the pipe, goes into the manifold, into the cylinders, and comes out here on top of the head. And then the green hose at the bottom down there, that's just the drain, the cylinder drain that's on all the skis, that's where this one is. And then we've got uh, a couple of CSIs, um, cooling system indicators is what that is. Sometimes it's also doubles as a bleed. Uh, it's just where water can exit different points of the pipe, but we usually use them as what we call pissers, and it's just an indicator that goes out to the back or the side of the ski so you can see that your water is circulating. <clears throat> um, and then there's the jet. So this is the water jet that actually sprays into the exhaust. It cools the exhaust gases down, and it's also a performance thing in there, so they're kind of interrelated. <clears throat> but that's the water injection. And so in 97.5, when the Grey Ghost came out, they actually had this fitting um, routed to this thing, which is a, a water regulator. It's not a ray valve, even though it, it looks like the exhaust ray valves. It's not a ray valve. Some people mistakenly call it that. Um, it's a water regulator. And it basically does two things. It's, it, it sprays water down into the water box there, uh, but it also controls the amount of water that goes to your injector. Now, in, uh, on this model, when it first came out, they ran this directly to the, to the regulator, but after that, I don't remember if it was 98 or 99, they switched that around and they reversed all of this. And what they did was they made this side the input from the pump. And then the other one is the exit. You know, the drain, of course, stayed the same. And then what they did was instead of having um, this fitting feed water to the regulator, they fed the regulator directly from the input pressure, um, and then this stays the same. So on these fittings, uh, it's important to know that they are sized. They have a number stamped on the side of them. <clears throat> this is the one that used to be in it, and you can see that that is a 16. Um, it went here, and so to do this, change, I had to find a 48, which is a smaller inside diameter for the CSI. So I basically just took that one out. I don't need it anymore. Um, everything else remains the same. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of what we've done for the routing. And in terms of like what bad things can happen, uh, if it's, it's a common thing that these regulators can leak, um, and you know if they if they start to malfunction and they're not sending water, you know along the hose to the to the injector, or or if something is if it's plugged up somewhere, 
<clears throat> then you don't get water in here and it causes the exhaust gases to get so hot that they melt this rubber exhaust coupler. So if you, if you see your exhaust coupler has got a hole in it or it's melted, <clears throat> it's, it's almost always, always because it's not getting water into your injector. So that's what that is. <clears throat> um, one of the things that you can do is if this, it, this thing is notorious for, you know, being a little finicky and, and kind of uh, problematic, you know, some people say if you take them apart once, they'll never work right again. Other people get rebuild kits and rebuild them. Um, I took it all apart and inspected it. There's a rubber bellows in there that <clears throat> a common problem is there's a little pinhole um, from one of the little spring clamps inside there that pokes a hole in that bellows and that tiny little hole causes a problem. I checked it real good and I actually saw where it was al almost happening, but there was no there was no puncture all the way through the bellows. So I just kept it and put it all back together and I believe it's going to be fine, but we'll see when we test it. If you do have problems with this, what some people do is they remove it and they do what's called hard jetting. And what they do is they basically put a jet here, <clears throat> you know, and they, they tee off of this line and one goes directly here because it's always getting water. Um, and then they put a jet um, in here. I believe you have to tap it out and things like that. And you put an ordinary carburetor jet in there, believe it or not. But you put the right size jets in there um, so that it, you know, there's no regulator controlling it. Um, to learn more about how to do that and how this works, you can look at the 97 racing manual and it's got a section in there that you won't find in your normal manuals that explains how this works and it explains how to remove it and do the the hard jetting uh so uh that's it um next thing we're gonna do is after we get the hull finished we're gonna put the motor in and uh, get it going so hope this helps and uh thanks for watching